Hey, it's Kim. Thanks for stopping by my newest video where I'm going to go through setting up my daily planner for 2022. I went back and forth about how to even do this video and I'm not sure. Um, I'm still not sure. <laughs> so I, I know that I went through this fourth quarter uh, planner update for 2021 that video is on my channel so you can go back and take a look at that but in that video I kind of ran through how I landed on the system uh, things and tweaks that I made and why I figured it would be great for me for 2022 so I invested in the system I'm definitely going to do it so right now I'm setting up for 2022 um, I've been using this layout or a system as I call it since about June or July of 2021 so I do know it's going to work and I'm really confident about how it's going to work for me I guess my whole concern about showing you my 2022 setup is that I wasn't sure how to show it or I wasn't sure if I needed to show exactly how I'm using each component, if I would be able to do that, if it would just be like a repeat of what I showed in that fourth quarter update video. But alas, here we are, and I'm going to go through setting this up with you. So currently I have everything for 2021 in here. So as we open up, um, oh, and to backtrack a bit, this is a VDS Standard Nomad, which is the same size as a standard size traveler's notebook. So it's the VDS no Nomad. Outside leather is Janet Leather Black. And I asked for pebbly with a lot of texture and that's what they gave me. The inside is Janet Leather Velvet Sand, which is more of like a new buck kind of um, leather. And it feels really nice, really amazing. It does lean a little bit pink, but it's more in the neutral taupey kinds of category just with stronger pink undertones and of course it looks pinker because of things that I have in here also on that note the things that I have in here are kind of temporary so I have some task cards that I was trying to figure out what to do with over on this side or how I wanted to lay out the task cards I have these clear cards that I intended to put some task flags on but when I think about it I'm not sure if I'm going to use that so I don't know if there's a point in putting it in there aside from just looking pretty. So there's two clear cards in here and then these were just the VDS cards that it came with. And I kind of want to see how far these tabs could go back in there. So that's why that's there. They're not functional in any kind of way. This is an Ollie Heart. Uh, it's magnetic and on the back I have a ma uh, magnet inside the pocket. Yes, that's what's holding that on there. The other half of this Ollie clip is in my other personal wide planner of which I did a flip recently. This card is from Poi and Hun. This uh, calendar is from Sterling Inc. It's part of her freebies if you're in the Facebook group. Speaking of Sterling Inc., this uh, cover. So I use a Sterling Ink vellum. I laminated it and kind of DIY'd my own cover for this book. And it's really just a mess. <laughs> Not a mess necessarily, but I, I was trying to see if I could make my own cover using laminate. It works, technically, my own dashboard cover. It works. Um, I'm not a huge fan of how shiny it is, but that's not really my issue. But I think I want something that I can alternate what the covers look like. So this is currently what my system is. It consists of about three books with like a fourth optional book. Oh, and if you see any of the ink stains on my fingers, disregard. This is new ink day. <laughs> so I was inking up some of my fountain pens. But anyway, so my system consists of the first book, which is my monthlies and weeklies. And then the second book are my dailies. So that's what's in here. And then the third book is my um, journal. And currently, I do have a fourth book, and like I said, that's an optional one. And I actually made myself a health tracker recently because I'm trying to get my eating back on track. I have some, like, allergy issues. I have some nutrient deficiencies, things that I need to be paying attention to now that I'm older. And then I just have a few things shoved into the back. So, the reason why I thought that maybe this would be a two-part video is because not everything is final like not this is not final I haven't finished that this is not final it drives me bananas that I even have papers in here but I have it here so I can remember to process this or remember to actually do something with it um, before I can take it out 
um, just things like that. But I do want to go through showing you how I'm going to set up all of the inserts for 2022. So this first one, like I said, is something that I made and it does work for, I'm going to take out just all this stuff so I can give you a closer look. So it does work for covering up the Traveler's Notebook insert. Oops. And I, that's what I have the string on in here. And then I just have these inside the uh, book. The flaps inside of there. Now, under normal circumstances, because I'm using a larger book, this would only hold one of those. So that would work, could work. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this going forward for 2022 because this was my first try. And I made a few mistakes, quite a few mistakes. Um, as you can see, it doesn't really lay flat. It kind of likes to open up. I tried to crease it. And that made the vellum lift from the laminate. So I'm not sure how I'm going to... Well, I actually do have a few plans of how to fix this. And I think we'll go through that in this video. This one is just fine. It's staying the same. It's staying absolutely the same. Except I do have some decor items that I need to put in these pockets. Which I'll explain to you in a little bit. So that's that one. And... I'll take that out while we're at it. And then this is the health insert. So the VDS Nomad comes with four elastics. So I can put four books or four inserts in here. And also if you do something called uh, using a jump band, you can put more. Where you combine a couple of inserts together. So, to show you what I'll be using for 2022 for this same system, um, my thought is that for the monthly and weekly book I'm going to actually add some yearly information to that so that's one difference from how I was using it previously so I'm going to have a yearly calendar just so I can reference um, also the daily book oh so that's going to be one book and that's going to be for the entire year so the monthlies and weeklies will be for the entire year same book the dailies however I have this half year stalogy it was an A5 size. I cut it down to be standard size, which is about 4.25 inches in width, I believe. So I did cut this down, and I didn't do the greatest job. <laughs> this is inside of a traveler's notebook cover, dashboard cover, where it just has a clear dashboard on one side and then a zip pouch on the other side. So I'll be using this for my dailies, and the reason why I like this is because it is 4 millimeter grid spacing. Because I like to fill in a lot more information on my daily pages. I like that smaller grid spacing. So that's what I'll be using. And I have two of these. However, I'm not sure I'll use a full two for the entirety of 2022. But if I need to, I'll switch it out. But when this ends, and it's 192 pages that come in this half year astrology. When this ends, I'll either switch to another half year astrology, depending if... Um, you know, I end around the midpoint of the year, or I'll switch it out to an 80 page uh, insert that I have from Puffin Pages Co. No, not Puffin Pages Co. I did that the last video. I'm sorry, it's not Puffin Pages Co. It's Paper Penguin Co. It's the peas. They're just throwing me off. So, speaking of Paper Penguin Co., all of my inserts are from that shop. You can find Puffin uh, Paper Penguin Co. on Etsy. She also has her own website paperpenguinco.com and the owner's name is Dominique and she does take custom orders which is absolutely amazing she does great work all of the inserts that I get from her have the Tomoe River paper which is that thinner fountain pen friendly paper that we all know and love especially if you use Hobonichi products so that's that kind of paper in here this insert is actually 180 page insert that I asked Dominique to make for me. The listings in her shop only go up to 160 pages, but this is for my journal. So the third insert in my system is my journal. And if I'm journaling daily, which I have been over the past few months, I do have the video all about um, a journaling journaling challenge that I did to challenge myself to journal daily. I have that linked down below, but I do still journal on a daily basis. So that is what's included in here that's what I would use this for and I have two of these from Dominique's shop assuming that I journal daily that'll give me at least 360 pages some days I journal a full page 
sometimes more, sometimes less, so I'm sure it should balance out. So I will switch those out like mid-year along with this. And like I said, the monthly yearly book. So I have that over here. I'm at my desk and everything's just jumbled around. I'll explain this in a minute. So this is another book from uh, Dominique Shop, Paper Penguin Co. This is the 160 page book. So very similar to the 180 page book. Similar in thickness, just a little bit, you know. Thicker for the 180, obviously. But this is the one that I'll be using for my year, month, and weeklies. And I already kind of mapped out how many pages I'll need for everything. So that's what I'm going to go through with you as I set it up. And because my system is more of a bullet journal kind of system, I don't necessarily set up all the months ahead of time. So the way I bullet journal, I'll set up the, pre the coming month. And then just leave it at that. <laughs> We're about halfway through December right now. So it's time for me to set up for January. I'll just set up all the weeklies for January. Set up the monthly. And then uh, go from there. So this one will house my year. I'm going to do a year on two pages. I'm going to have um, probably this little kind of like vision board type thing. Just a little bit of decor that I'm going to add to here. And then all of my monthlies and my weeklies for the year of 2022 and I like to have my month then the weeks and then the month and then the weeks interspersed in that way oh and another thing that is going to change for this system for 2022 in my daily book I'm going to include uh, an, um, an index at the beginning so I'm going to include an index that tells me because sometimes on the daily pages I might write notes that I need to reference probably only for a couple of weeks at a time so nothing that I would classify as a collection or something that I need to have for long term so you know I might include those on a daily spread and I might want to index it you know in the front so I know where to look for that specific topic on which I wrote down some notes this page here is um, I was testing it out was from back in July this was like a, a sample of my daily pages and I was just testing to see how I liked the four millimeter spacing that was the initial reason why I was in here reason why this is in here and then I tried it out with an actual insert from Paper Penguin Co. that I asked her to customize two four millimeter dot grid spacing. It was perfect. Here we are today. So I am going to take this page out. I'm just going to cut it out. I'm going to get started setting everything up and I'll include a voiceover as I'm going through it and kind of speed through a lot of the parts just so that this video doesn't take an extremely long time because <laughs> that's what I'm also hoping. Um, I didn't know exactly how I wanted to present this setup video and I knew I wanted it to be more than just a flip. I kind of wanted to show you and talk through all the components of the system and um, you know so show you like a full setup but I know that I don't want it to be an hour long either. So I'm going to walk you through all of those things. This may cover more than one day but I don't know we'll see. So let's see where this takes us. I'm starting out by taking this graphic that I created on Canva and splitting it in half. My original plan was to use this as like a vision board for 2022 and I was going to have it across a two page spread but instead I decided to cut it down the middle and use the section that says 2022 as sort of like my intro page. And I'm applying it to the notebook using Tombow adhesive tape. And I just stick it right in there. It's not necessarily perfect, but that's absolutely fine. And I should note that I printed this out on Tomoe River paper so that it would be on the same kind of thin paper and not add too much bulk to the notebook. Next, I'm going in with the calendar. It's a year on two pages that I also created. I think I mentioned that already, but I'm putting it in and this was printed also on Tomoe River paper and I'm sticking that in with the Tombow adhesive tape as well. Once that was done, I thought maybe I would want to add some washi tape um, right inside there, inside the cover to kind of slick down or smooth down the edge of that printout, but I decided not to in the end. I pasted in the other half of that graphic that has my word of the year, which is clarity. 
and I thought that maybe I would add maybe some goal information around those pages I'm still I still wasn't sure at this point but then I flipped the next page and started in setting up for January 2022 and I'm referencing my older notebook from 2021 to just see what kind of spacing I used. I wanted to see how far from the top of the page I started entering the numbers for the month. And I just enter in the dates in a list type of view. Because I find that this is the most functional for me. I don't necessarily need like a two page spread showing the full month. On the next page, that's where I enter in the information for my tracker. So I add in the dates as well right there and then the days of the week right on top of that. And of course I'm referencing my calendar because I don't know what the days of the week are <laughs> or the days for the dates in January, 2022. So after I reference those, I'll add those in and then continue to draw in the additional lines that I need for my tracker. And on here, I'm tracking things like my sleep hours, I'm tracking my menstrual cycle, I'm tracking um, if I drank enough water, if I worked out, if I stretched, all those other types of things that I do like to stay on top of. I've been using this type of tracker for about six or seven months now, and it really did start with the tracker layout that's in um, the Wonderland 222 because I really liked it. I liked having enough space to just track a whole bunch of stuff as well as enough space to create my own graphs and to see how things are trending. So in the bottom portion is what I'll use for like my graph and there that's why I track my cycle days, my sleep hours, my energy levels. Um, around there I'm also tracking whether or not I get migraines because I do want to see how all of that lines up in relation to my 28 day cycle. On the page on the right, I'm including my highlights for the month. So every month I have a page where I allow for one line a day to mark down a highlight of that day. Once that's done, I'm counting out the number of pages I'll need for each month or for the weeklies for each month. So I'm counting out how many weeks there are in January and then I'll allow a two page spread for each week of the month. And here you see me doing that for January, for February, and I do continue through and do the same thing for the entire year just to kind of plot out and to make sure I'm going to have enough pages so that I know where certain months will end around about. And it's really just so that I know I won't run out of pages. All right, so we're back. This is actually the next day. I took a break last night. Um, and decided to kind of think through all of what I want to do for the rest of the setup and obviously made a mess on my desk so please ignore that but we'll get right into where I left off so where I left off as I'm moving some of this stuff out of the way where I left off was oh I was in the yearly book and I added in these pages and then what I did, what you saw me do a little bit and I sped through it, I was setting up the months. So this is, for instance, January and the way I have it uh, planned out in my mind, this is where the month starts. This is the list of the calendar days and I will write down events here. And then we go into my tracker for the month right over here and my highlights. For the month so every day i'll write down a little blurb or sentence about my highlight for the day and then i get into the weeks so i've separated out enough weeks according to the calendar for each month january has four weeks so that would be one week two weeks three weeks four weeks and then i marked here because right after this is where february starts so we'll do the same thing again 
Um, this is actually going to be the recap for January. And then February starts here. And you go into the tracker, the highlights, and then enough weeks. to Which I believe February is for, of course. And then this marks the next month, which is March. When that will be the recap for February. The list of calendar days for March. Tracker, highlights, and then the weeks for March. One, two, three, four, five. Apparently five full weeks in March. And the way I determine whether I split a week up is how many days it has for the month. So for instance, I'm not looking at a calendar right now, but imagine if the last week of February, first week of March, is like four days in March, three days in February. I'll consider that a March week. So that's why I put it over here into March. So I did that for all of the months of the year, and I used these spotlight page flags from Cloth and Paper. This is palette number one. And the colors on here are Lagoon, Mykonos, and Aspen. So I just marked them out. I didn't do the tracker and the list and everything for every month. But I just marked them out so that I would make sure everything is evenly spaced and I have enough for the entire year. And as predicted, this is where December ends. And then I just have this one lonely sheet left that I can do something else with. So everything's spaced out and planned out. And up here at the top, I do have these page flags also from Cloth and Paper on this circle page flag set, uh, volume number three. And I use the one that is Mykonos, I believe. So it matches, yeah, it matches the um, gray on here. And my thought was maybe I would use these as my tabs for this year for my daily. Um, I'm not entirely certain that that's going to work, but we'll see. But I have one where I would mark my monthly. And then one, I mark the page for my tracker and highlights. And then the other one I mark for my weeklies. So that's how I have my current one set up. But I'm using those Avery index tabs that I can show you. I don't even know where my planner is. <laughs> that I'll show you in one second. Give me a minute. Okay, so I'm back. And this is what I was referring to. So I use these Avery page flags. And you can see this one has gotten... I don't know if you can see, but this one's gotten a little bit gunky because I've put it on top of like ink and taken it off and put it on, but I have one for my monthly tab um, and I just use my label maker to make labels for it uh, for my tracker here, my tracker and my highlights and then the weekly and I do also have one for the dailies, but I think for next year I'm going to use a different system that's going to work, I don't know or last a little bit longer we'll see I haven't quite figured that part out as of yet but that's what I temporarily marked with the circle page flags here so that's as far as we've gotten currently what I'm going to do next is actually set up January with you so I know I said I don't go too far into the future dates and I don't so I just set up the first three months of the year and then I'll set up the first weeks of January not the first weeks all the weeks of January and normally the way I do this is I decide on a layout for the weekly that I want to use for the month and I pretty much change every month <laughs> originally when I set out to, to um, put together my 2022 system I had grand plans to print them out and print them out myself on Timoe River paper I bought loose leaf paper to do that I planned everything out but then at the last minute, I got cold feet because I know that every month or almost every month, I want to change my weekly layout for whatever reason. Maybe my life is a little bit different. Maybe I just want to try something new. I haven't really found a layout that I truly love. So I'm having commitment issues. <laughs> and there isn't one that I've decided that I can truly stick to at the moment. So that's where we are. But I do know... I want to try a horizontal weekly for the month of January and I think we're going to have Monday through Friday over here and then Saturday and Sunday and my tasks and meals and workouts over here. So those are the main things I normally include on what I call my weekly dashboard. So that's what I'm going to do there. Before we get to that part though, I'll show you how I'm going to set up January. So I did print out these freebies from Sterling Inc. 
And these are the ones that you get if you're part of her Facebook group. And I have been doing this for several months, even back when I was in my B6. Um, but I'll print out the freebie and use that as like the intro page for the month. So that is my plan for January. Originally, I printed this, and I always do, on A5 size paper because it's the same height as a Sandra size traveler's notebook. And then previously, I was overlapping it to go... I would actually put it on this page, but overlapping it so that I would go over to the next page and I just have my calendar list here. But what I'm going to do, since I wanted to add in that monthly review page into this book and I didn't want to add excess pages, I think what I'm going to do, no, I know what I'm going to do is now put it on this side and then, so imagine if it's like in between months so this will be the review side for the month prior and then this will be like the intro page for the coming month so that's how I want to have it laid out so I originally printed this on A5 paper as soon as it was released I feel like that was early December even before I decided that I'm gonna move it over to the left side so because the calendar is over here that means I can't or I will need to cut off more things over on this side and I don't want to because it's beautiful. So I don't want to cut off too much of that like uh, bluish grayish colored flower or the pink flower. So then I had the bright idea to print it in personal size. So personal size is the same width or around about the same width. It's No, it's 3.75 and the width of standard is 4.25 for a page. So I print it in personal and I increased the percentage a little bit. I want to say maybe it was 110%. I'm not entirely sure, but that's so I could get it a little bit wider and a little bit taller because the height of personal is 6.75 and the height of this is 8.25. So about an inch and a half taller. So what I'm going to do is cut this here and... I can cut into this side a little bit more and I'm not losing too much of the pretty colors. So I'll like cut there and then tip it in here and then I'll still have some of this pretty pink flowers and these florals um, and that is going to work. I'm pretty sure that's going to work. So I'm going to do that and then set up the weeks and we'll do it all um, with a little bit of music and I'll come back in with a voiceover explaining to you how I'm setting everything up. I'm taking that vellum and trimming down the sides so I can make sure it lines up perfectly in my notebook. Trimming down the sides. Um, I didn't take any off the top and the bottom because I think the height of the paper was perfectly fine. So I'm just going to tip that in using some clear tape. And the tape that I use is just like a regular scotch tape, but the kind that is matte. So more similar to like that... Um, the one that they sell for gift wrap. And just before I do that, I do clip the edges so that I can round the corners of that vellum piece. Because as you'll see, the insert actually has rounded edges on all the pages, so I just want that to match. Next, I'm taking out a few of my Tombow markers to see which ones um, best go along with the colors in the Sterling Ink vellum. So I know that I normally mark out the weekends on my list view the calendar list but I like to choose like a main color that I'm going to use throughout the entire month so I use this color in both the weeklies and the dailies it goes along with the subscription kit that I get from sterling ink and it just keeps everything cohesive so each month in both this uh, monthly and um, weekly book and in my daily book they all use the same colors so you'll see here, I'm marking out Saturday and Sunday on that list view, and it just helps me, you know, stay sane. And then I'm referencing my calendar on my phone to see what events I have in there. I still need to check my companion planner as well as my daily planner to see if there are any other dates or upcoming events that I need to add to January. Then I use that highlight color that I chose, and that was the 772 from Tombow and use that to mark my titles for the pages. 
Next, I'm setting up the weekly view for January. I typically tend to use the same weekly for the entire month or the same weekly layout. And here I'm going with the horizontal type of layout. I'm doing Monday through Friday on the left side and I'll do Saturday and Sunday over on the right side along with my task list and um, the dinners that I'm planning for the week, the workouts I'm planning for the week and anything else that I choose to include there. I call this my weekly dashboard and it really is where I kind of go and I look to to see all the things that's going on for the week. And it doesn't really stay the same all the time, which is why I do tend to switch it up. Just about every month I'll change uh, what layout I'm using um, just because I want to try something different or I need to add a different thing or something's not working. I just like to switch it up. Maybe I have commitment issues. I don't know. But I'm going in with that same Tombow 772 and marking out the dates Monday through Sunday and um, a little header up at the top for my task list. So I set up all the weeks and I dated them and everything. So I did the same thing for all of them, all the four full weeks of January. And then this is when we get into February and I won't set these weeks up until probably midway to three quarters through January. That's when I'll set up the next month. So this book for the most part is generally finished. I do want to put the cover on this book and I've debated and gone back and forth a little bit. So this is the first book in my planner and what I showed you I have that um, sterling ink vellum that I really really love. I'm trying to reach back over here. Yep, yeah, I really really love it and I have a few of these. So I want to put this on the front cover but I wanted to make a better vinyl cover. I have this one that's A5. I think I'm going to try and DIY it to cut it down to make it fit. I do know there are a couple of these on the market. I think Chic Sparrow sells them for the standard TN. Um, but those have been out of stock for quite a while. And Lauren Phelps Design makes them. But those I feel like are really pretty. But I really just want something simple. Those have a lot of pockets and everything. Like all on the inside. Which is wonderful. But not what I need. I feel like it's excess for what I need. I just want a simple one. Um, I did hear that Cat Espresso Co. is supposed to come out with some. So when she does I'll probably look into those as well. But in the meantime I wanted something that I could use as a cover. That I could switch out the vellum should I want to. Should I choose to. So the one that I made that was laminated is aside from not the pretty not the prettiest I can't switch out the vellum in it because I laminated the actual vellum so I think I'm gonna try to DIY something for that let's work on cutting down this cover now I've never done it before um so I don't know what to expect I am thinking I've never done it before, never seen it before, <laughs> but I'm thinking what I'm going to do is slit this in the middle and this is just one of those Midori covers. Um, you can find them on Amazon. I believe JetPen sells them. They're about five bucks. So very inexpensive, but I do have a couple of them. I have exactly a couple. I have two of them. I'm going to try this on one first and see how it goes. I'm thinking I'm just going to split it and then cut some of this excess off and then use some clear packing tape to seal around it and see how that works out. This is a very, very crude <laughs> demonstration of how I'm cutting down this A5 notebook um, cover or vinyl. So I cut it down the middle and then cut a little bit extra off to make sure it lines up with the same width that the traveler's notebook is. But I put a piece of clear packing tape right down the middle. And I made sure to kind of put it in there off center so that more of the packing tape shows on the back of the dashboard cover instead of on the front. So I kind of made that off center, put that down and then added another piece of clear packing tape right on the top of that. But in order for it to be thin enough to fill in that little thin section in the middle. I needed to cut the packing tape in half. So that's what you see me doing here. I cut that in half, put that on, on the front, 
sealed down the edges and made sure that the little pockets on the side of the notebook cover are not hindered by the tape and that I will still be able to slide the notebook in there. Okay, it's gotten really dark outside. I hope the lighting in here is still fine. Um, so, we're covered. Everybody's covered up and I love the way they came out. I actually do kind of like how this one is not as shiny as this one, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. But everybody's covered up and it's pretty cool. And one thing I did want to note about this dashboard cover from Midori or Traveler's Notebook is the fact that the back of the insert can't slip into here because this is a zip pocket. So there's no place for it to go. So I don't know if maybe I might clip this to the back here so that at least when I turn it, it's not like extra pages. And also note that obviously I put this white paper underneath the vellum so that it can make the colors show through a lot better for both of these. I put a white paper underneath and um, they're all set. I did want to show how I set up the daily book. So basically in the beginning, I decided to add in an index, which is something I don't currently have in my system, but I figured it would be a good place to add in information that I do want to reference um, within a short period of time. So if I need some information over the span of a few weeks and I might write down some notes on my daily pages, it's a good idea to index this so I know where to find it when I need it. If it's something that I'm going to need over a much longer term or like, a, you know, the period of a year, I would include that in or I would consider that a collection and I put that in either a different notebook or sometimes my yearly book. But here I'm setting up my index and I'm just using some stickers from Sterling Inc as well as my trusty label maker to title that index. And I also use some washi tape from Paper Minty Studio. After the daily book is done, I'm moving right on to my journal, which really doesn't take you know much of a setup, but this cover that I have, which is the card pocket holder, I believe it's made by Traveler's Company. And it you can put um, 12 like business cards in there, both front and back. So what I decided to do, I actually saw Sam from the Planner Spot do this in one of her recent uh, Planner Flip videos. She created these faux Polaroids based on her goals and I wanted to do something very similar. So in Canva, I just created these and then I put the titles of all of my goals on top of that in a script font and printed those out on cardstock. It's not a super thick cardstock, but on cardstock and I really love the way it came out. I feel like it's just another spot for me to see my goals, to focus on them and to keep them top of mind. Since I did cover in my previous goal video, I do keep this information inside my companion planner. So I'm not looking at it every single day, but I like that this is a way to remind me of what my goals are for the year. I'm not setting up my actual traveler's notebook just yet because we still have about two more weeks left. Let's back it up just a little bit. So I know I just said that um, 2022 isn't here yet and I have a few more weeks, but because it took me a while to get this video edited, 2022 is now here. Ta-da! So anyway, so we're actually a couple days into the new year and I can show you what everything looks like inside of my Vanderspeck Nomad setup. And she's very, very chunky. All of these books are super thick. I'm sure they will get even thicker as I use it. We'll see what happens. If I keep two pins in here, I cannot close this. So what I would do differently is probably extend the clasp. I don't think I would get this any wider. I don't think because I really like a compact chunky kind of feel for my planners. So there's that in case anyone is wondering. But if I do take this pin um, out of this holder, I can close everything. So I'm going to give you a quick look at what the 2022 setup is looking like at the moment and you'll be able to see how I'm using it for these first few days of 2022. So let's get into it. So when we open up, um, I just switched out a little bit of the, the decor items. Um, I can't talk either because I'm trying to hurry up and do this pretty fast. This one is a card that says protect your energy. That's from the planner spot. And this one is a little decorative diptyque inspired 
thingy that I made on Photoshop with my name and here I am going to put in some task cards. I actually did order some from Catspresso Co and Catspresso um, announced that they will be releasing standard traveler's notebook covers on January 7th which is coming up in a few days I think I'm releasing this one on January 8th so if you see it then and you are in the market for one of these um, or a cover for your traveler's notebook standard size make sure you go check them out I'm going to be checking them out on the 7th and ordering mine so, but I did order some task cards to go in here and I'm excited about what those are going to look like. I think this is moving. I just left it for the time being. But, so as soon as I open up and you can see how my DIY um, cover that I made from that A5 Midori vinyl cover turned out. And I was trying to explain that I, when I taped it, I made it so that the tape is mostly on the back of the uh, vinyl. So the tape comes around to here but it starts over here. So I just didn't want to have that overlapping on top of whatever image or um, vellum I'm going to put into here. So it kind of overlaps on the back. Oh, and this is a card from the planner spot. I think I'm going to put my word of the year, which I believe is clarity. I'm going to put that on here some way, somehow. I didn't necessarily want to use a marker to put it on there because I don't want it to be super permanent. Uh, so let's get into it. I've got my January calendar from Sterling Ink. Again, this is a Sterling Ink vellum that's inside of that cover. And, oh, you did see me put this 2022, like, intro page. And after living with it for a couple of weeks, I determined that I hate it. <laughs> so I clipped this together so that you can't really see it or I can't see it as soon as I open it up. And I did make myself... Uh, my own vision board on Canva, which we'll get to in a minute. But on here, I just marked out some of my um, office closures for my job and school closures for the kids. I use different uh, transparent dots and strips from cloth and paper, and that's what I marked out on there. And here is the vision board slash mood board type system thingy that I whipped up on Canva. All of these images were from Pinterest, I believe, and I just like to look at this kind of color palette. And there's some inspiring things on here as well because I want to get into running. I signed up for my first half marathon, so I'm really excited about training for that. Um, I would like to do more yoga. This is the amazing Koya Webb in that picture. Um, and some Christian-based things, images that are pretty cool and inspiring for me. That is also a picture of Greece. We're not going to Greece this year, but we are going soon. <laughs> but I just really like the colors and how they vibe here. And the books with my whole uh, reading journal thing challenge that I've been on. I did set up my reading challenge for 2022. It's going to be 30 books for the year. And I am going to film a video all about my reading journal. That should be coming up soon. So you'll be able to see what all that looks like and what I include in there. So over here I thought that maybe I would put some goal information, but maybe not. I don't think so. But this is where we open up and start into January. So that's my calendar. That's my tracker. Um, these stickers are all from Sterling Inc. that I decorated with from her January kit. And this sticker is from the planner spot. That's a script monthly sticker. So my tracker, my highlights which I thought about, I do call them highlights, but sometimes I kind of include lowlights. Like I don't just include things I'm grateful for or things that are amazing, just some notable items from the day. So I'm wondering if I should switch the title of this page. If you have any ideas of what I could call this, let me know. Oh, and I did make some of these floating tabs out of, just out of some laminate. And I stuck some stickers on there. I don't think you can really read them too well, but that one says month, that one says wellness, and then that one says week. These stickers are from the planner spot, one of the older subscription boxes that I had. So I wanted to try it out and see how I like these floating tabs. They're working okay. Um, but in the meantime, I did leave these circle tabs on here just in case I want to go back to those or um, just in case I want to use them for something else. I'm not going to toss them. I'll just move them from here to mark something else. So then here is my first weekly for the month. Currently it is January 4th. So 
we're right at the start of the week and I put this tracker here from Sterling Inc. I printed it out on uh, just a white post-it note and I wasn't sure if I wanted to track a few things that I don't know health related things that I didn't necessarily want on my monthly but I'm not sure so anyway that's that's the reason why I have that there so this is my weekly as it is now it's not really filled in um, I did put in some dinners and workouts that I plan to do this week but we're really still early and we've been going through a whole lot as the world has so my schedules are kind of shifted and mixed up we got COVID test COVID test COVID test <laughs> So there's just a bunch of stuff going on and I marked the cat espresso release. But anyway, my weeklies are set up. I put a sticky note on each month just in case I need to mark down like something that's coming up before I actually set up the month. So I did that for each of the months and I have that there whenever I might need it. So that is that book. Oh, in the back I also added um, some Tombow swatches. So I have that here on this page and then on this page I have swatches of the um, ink pads that I use for my stamps. And you'll see I do want to use my stamps more coming or in this current year. I'm going to use them more and then I just have some notes. So I'm using this as kind of like my dashboard or inbox just to park some sticky notes for extra sticky notes, blank ones that I might need. So I keep that right inside of there and then we switch over to my daily book and I added in this calendar card from, it's a freebie from Paper Test Designs, it's really pretty. So I added that in there and here I have some notes about my reading journal actually that I wanted to keep and then this is a Sterling Ink sticker, a calendar sticker. I thought about maybe sticking all of the months on here that are inside this book. Oh. And I should tell you that I actually changed the inside paper. I don't know if you recall, but it was this from earlier footage. But it's this gray looking kind of cardstock that's normally in the front of Astology. I just cut that out. I like sliced it out. And I added this blush color cardstock that I have. I glued it onto this side and then just folded this side. And I used a bit of washi coordinating washi that was over here I made or I cut a thinner piece and then put it there to hold down that little piece of edge that I cut off from the gray cardstock so that's what that's covering up so here's my index I added a few things my monthly task list I'm just gonna um, note them here and something I didn't mention earlier in the video is the way I index this is based on date so since these don't have page numbers in the strategy I mark down what date whatever I'm indexing is on or around so for instance my January task list the date I have is January 2nd so that's where I can flip to to find out you know or to find where that is inside this book so this spread I left blank and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it I was thinking maybe I would put, I would put something like an ideal week template or spread or like a cleaning schedule kind of template I don't know just something decorative and something pretty so that's probably what that's gonna be and then here's where I started January so I started January from the first obviously and then this is another example of that paper test designs freebie so on this side I printed the calendar and this is on really thin copy paper and on the back there was the um, decorative floral print that she provided along with this freebie it coordinates with the two so here I have Saturday and Sunday and then a review for the week I normally do my weekly reviews and then I put my order tracker in here so a two page spread um, for the order tracker who knows how long this will take me and then once this is filled up I'll just move it wherever else I am inside this book and then oh this is a page that I wanted to put information about my plants if you did not know <laughs> I own a whole lot of plants um, I have accumulated even more plants since my last plant tour videos um, I'll link those down below or up in the cards if you're interested but I do put information about the last time I used insecticide or the last time I whatever else I, I have a lot of them so putting like a watering schedule or anything here wouldn't work for me nor do I really have a watering schedule but I digress but that's what I'm gonna put right here and then this is my January task list 
or brain dump or I don't know what to call it. Just things that I want to get done in the month of January. And I decorated it with some sterling ink stickers and washi tapes. And then I just left myself a bit more room to fill in additional information. Oh, and I'm using these post-it, like a um, sticky tape. It's supposed to be like sticky notes, but it's actually on a tape runner that I got from JetPins to put down on the pages of what I want to use them for. And I think they're really cool. They don't damage the paper or anything, and you can pull off as much as you need off the roll and use it that way. So that's what I have marked there, but I can toss that now that I know what this is. Um, and then we get into Monday. That was yesterday's schedule. And then today is Tuesday. So here is where we are. Oh, and this is, I printed um, the same pa paper test designs freebie onto vellum. So I do intend to stick this somewhere in my planner one of these days. So I printed that, and then this is an extra sterling ink uh, calendar card. And I do have another one of those floating tabs here to mark my daily page. So that's how I flip to it really quickly. That's all we have in here currently. And again, oh, I did have this clipped. Again, yeah, I wanted to clip this together so that the paper stays, you know, on the back cover of this book. But in here I have my cards that I use. These are Hobonichi stencil cards. And I just use them for maybe check boxes or just a straight edge whenever I need it and here is my journal book and you can see my cards that I created for my goals they're in here as you saw earlier and then I have this clip to my current journal page so this is the one from yesterday and then this will be my spread to start journaling for today so I'll clip that here so that's how everything is set up and I did put a few, I decorated a few spreads in here just so that I have them, you know, ready for when I'm ready to journal. So that's that. And then that's the end of that. Oh, and back here, I just moved that female owned card that I had in the front from, po from Poi and Hun, moved it back here. And I created a little vellum envelope, an envelope out of vellum. And this is using a freebie print from Hey Planner Girl. So I just printed that out on vellum, created a little envelope for myself. And in here I have just some stickers and stamps. So that's what that's for. And as you can see, I cleaned up this back area better. <laughs> Because I know I was complaining about having those papers sticking out of the top and that really annoyed me. And here we're just clean, we're streamlined, we're okay. So that, my dear friends, is my current standard traveler's notebook size bullet journal setup for 2022. I feel like that is a mouthful, but it is a standard size traveler's notebook and my style of planning is more of a bullet journal kind of style. So that's what all of that means. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Um, I know I didn't want to make it a super long video and it still turned out to be pretty long, but I thank you so much if you've stuck around until this point. I just really didn't want to split it into two videos and I didn't want to create the suspense and the drama for nothing. <laughs> so I thank you so much for sticking around and watching today's video. If you have any questions on sources for anything that I've shown or any questions about how I plan, what I do, or any suggestions that I could use to do things things better or to name things better like I was calling that highlight section in my monthly planner or my monthly section I think I need a new name if you have any suggestions leave that down below in the comments again thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next one